Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, you know it is your boy B New. Uh, I had to come at you this afternoon. Of course, as you all know, I posted my morning uh, video this this morning on the show. But then I saw a lot of a lot of the comments saying uh, that I hear about uh, the comments that Dr. J made about LeBron James. And uh, first and foremost, uh, let me get this out of the way because all respects, big ups, big props major props whatever you want to give to dr julius Irvin, because dr j in my humble opinion is a top 10 uh player in the history of, of basketball uh even though a lot of his years were played with the aba uh you know it still doesn't take away from the fact of who he is as a basketball player and the great things that he accomplished and a lot of uh, for all you youngsters out there who don't know uh of course the aba was mainly more for black players initially because the NBA actually had uh, really majority only white players and the ABA was a little bit more of a flashier, fancier league with the colorful ball and the dunking, whereas the NBA at one point had even banned dunking. So that kind of give you a, a hit, quick history lesson of the differences between the ABA and the NBA, which I will touch on this shortly too in just a moment. But uh, just want to throw that in there. So, like I said, don't want to take away anything from Dr. J. We know he is a three-time champion. Uh, we know he is a four-time MVP. Uh, we know throughout his ABA and his NBA career, he never once missed the playoffs. Uh, he had, uh, what, eight different scoring titles. Uh, I mean, Dr. J was Michael Jordan before there was Michael Jordan. You know, Dr. J... I know a lot of you might not even know this, but when Michael Jordan did his famous dunk from the free throw line, Dr. J had already been doing that. And Dr. J was at that dunk contest when MJ was about to dunk from the free throw line. And MJ looked over at Dr. J and was like, should I do it? And Dr. J gave him that little nod and said, yeah. And the reason why I know this is because I'm a historian of the game. I uh, watch a lot of documentaries. And of course, I watched a lot of basketball growing up as well. And the thing about this is, uh, even Dr. J was a little bit before my time. I did get to watch him play, even though I was a very young boy. Uh, so I cannot really remember him I, as, as far as live play. But as far as seeing the highlights and knowing the history and watching him and seeing what he is able to do, uh, then I just must, uh, I, I must admit that I didn't see a whole lot of knowledge of him until I saw him later on as I grew you know, grew up and things like that. And see, I am a, a historian of the game and I do got much love for Dr. J. So at the end of the day, I don't want to take anything away from him. Now, with all that being said, we know what he recently said about LeBron James and everybody is all up in the uproar, of course. But let's not forget, I don't know if you know this, just a week or so ago, he said the Brooklyn Nets were trying to buy a championship. So let's just establish that too. So it's not only LeBron James that Dr. J is coming after, you know, uh, but just a, a more brief history on Dr. J. Like he wants to say that LeBron James wants to start, was the first to start all this super team and all this madness. But the thing about it is he's living, he's seeing things from a different uh, standpoint and the mentality of somebody, I won't say from a younger generation, but I would just say, uh, I won't even say crabs in a barrel mentality, but uh, just somebody that's not has an entrepreneurial spirit like uh, a LeBron James, so to speak. So, uh, a lot of you may not know, and I spoke about this in another video, that Oscar Robinson was very integral in starting free agency in the NBA. He was very integral. He fought Congress. Uh, he had a lot of arbitration agreements and things like that to where he actually had to go to court and face Senate uh, in order to pass free agency because he said it wasn't fair. You got drafted to a team. You stayed to that team your whole career, and you weren't able to move. Well, the reason why I throw that in there is because right before the ABA and NBA merger, I don't know if you all know this, but Dr. J uh, could have went to the NBA, which was paying more at the time than what the ABA was paying. But the NBA had a rule where you could not get drafted. You could not get drafted out of high school uh, or you couldn't get drafted unless you have four years out of high school or play four years of college. So you couldn't be two years at college and then leave. Well, the ABA had a clause to where after two years, you could actually leave and uh, go ahead and go. So Dr. J, you know, he was from New York. 
And uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't have a silver spoon in his mouth. And he was a New York street legend at, at Rocker Park and all the parks that he played in in New York. So if you haven't had a chance, go back and watch some of those documentaries about how great Dr. J was, you know. Uh, and the thing is, uh, Dr. J, he decided, well, hey, I'm going to go ahead and get drafted. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign with the ABA and get drafted and go to the ABA and go ahead and get my money. So he signed a, a, a deal that was worth a half a million dollars, I think was spread out over six or seven years, even though he was only playing five years uh, with the Virginia Squires. So for all of you who don't know, the Virginia Squires was an ABA team that never made it to the NBA uh, that ended up not making it through the merger. But he played with the Squires there where he was very, very successful. Uh, but the thing is, uh, while he was with the Squires, uh, you know, uh, while he was being so successful, he wasn't getting paid what he thought he should have got paid. So he comes to find out that his agent not only worked for him, but his agent worked for the Squires. So you got to realize this is back in the 70s. So, you know, a lot of things are just not cut cut and dry. But his agent actually worked for the Squires, and that really upset Dr. J. And he thought he was getting screwed out of his money. So Dr. J says, you know what? Well, I can go to the NBA, right? So he announces he was going to go to the NBA. So Dr. J says, you know what? Forget the Squires. I'm terminating my contract with them. And he went and signed with the Atlanta Hawks. And I know a lot of you probably didn't even know this, but he signed with the NBA Atlanta Hawks and he played for two years for the Atlanta Hawks. Well, I mean, sorry, he played two expedition, two exhibition games for the Atlanta Hawks, but it was three teams that was battling for Dr. J services because the NBA said, well, since he going to the NBA signing with the Hawks, no, we're gonna draft him. So we draft him to come to the Bucks. So actually, that would have been the best, the greatest super team ever because the Bucks at the time had Kareem and Oscar Robinson. So the Bucks would have had Oscar Robinson, uh, Dr. J, uh, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So now you had a lawsuit going on between the Virginia Squires, the Milwaukee Bucks who wanted Dr. J, the Virginia Squires who said, no, Dr. J belonged to us, and the Atlanta Hawks who said, no, he signed a deal with us. So guess what happened? Of course, the arbitration had to come about. They had to go to court. Uh, past the circuit court judge uh, and moving on up to state legislator and step in front of uh, other state congressmen to an arbitration committee to where it was ruled that Dr. J could no longer play for the Atlanta Hawks and he could also not play for the NBA Bucks and he had he, the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA and he had to honor his contract with the Squires. Well, now here he is squandering his years uh, with the Squires squandering his years. So now, what is he gonna do? He continued to lead the league in scoring, being great with the Squires, but he never had enough talent around him. He never had enough talent around him. And then even after he went against uh, New York, the New York Knicks, he still lost because the teams were too talented. So now he was making money, and now, you know, he probably looking back over the whole time and like, well, I stayed, I did what I had to do, even though you tried to go sign a contract and go to a different team based on money, but LeBron can't go and sign with a different team because his uh, his front office cannot do the job, but we're gonna get to that in just a moment. We'll get to that in just a moment. So back to Dr. J. So Dr. J, then you uh, end up going to the Nets. Uh, I mean, uh, the Squires were gonna trade you to the Nets Right, so the Swires trade you to the New York Knicks, who was New York at the time, but the New York already had the Knicks. So the New York Nets wanted to get into the NBA, but the New York Knicks sued them and said, no, 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 you can't come into our stomping grounds because this is our market. So they had a big lawsuit going on. So the Nets offered New York Knicks, and it's probably the biggest mistake in New York Knicks history, Dr. J writes and said, here, you can have Dr. J just weigh the price for us to get in because we're struggling. They didn't have the money because, you know, a lot of people weren't going to games. It was a bad time for the NBA, as we all know, when Magic Johnson came along and everything, uh, that, that even the finals were on tape delay. It wasn't even live broadcast. So anyway, they were struggling. Uh, the New York Knicks said no. They said no. Keep Dr. J. You're not getting this. Well, anyway, the Nets came up with the money by trading Dr. J uh, rights over and getting money from... Uh, as we all know, the Philadelphia 76ers who gave them $3 million. So basically, the Nets traded Dr. J over so they can be able to become an NBA franchise. You know, so they became an NBA franchise along with the other three ABA teams that's still in the NBA today, which is the Spurs, uh, the Pacers, and the Nuggets. 
Uh, Memphis had an ABA team that didn't make it. St. Louis had an ABA team that didn't make it. Louisville, uh, as we all know. But if you ever get a chance to pull up some of that old footage, the ABA was a great league and was deep, full of talent. So I'm not taking anything away from Dr. J. But anyway, back to Dr. J. So Dr. J, you then once you went to Philadelphia 76ers, you were the best. You kept leading the league, but you could not win. You could not win. So then they got you mo cheeks. They surrounded you with some good players. You started to come up and you was winning, but you couldn't get past the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals because by this time in 79 and 80, the the Boston Celtics has drafted Larry Bird. So now that the Boston Celtics drafted Larry Bird, you went seven with them in the Eastern Conference Finals. You lost. And we all know then what happened the next year. Then you made it. You made it past Larry. And you got to the to the finals against the Lakers, and what happened? That was magic rookie year, and what? You lost. You lost another finals. So you continue to lose two Eastern Conference finals in a row. You continue to lose through the playoffs uh, every year that you was with Philly. And then you could not get over the hump. And a lot of people don't realize this, but people think about the Magic Johnson and Larry Bird rivalry. You got to realize the West only played the East twice a year. And if they didn't see each other in the finals, that wasn't a whole lot. But Boston and Philly saw each other quite often. And really, Dr. J and the Larry Bird rivalry in the Eastern Conference really was the biggest rivalry in basketball between Philly and Boston. So if you can go get a chance to check that out. And I don't know if you know, but even EA Sports that, that one of the very first games that EA Sports made was Bird versus Dr. J. See if you can find it on YouTube. I'm going to try to see if I can find it, but it was Bird versus Dr. J. It was the first EA game, and that, that was because how popular Dr. J was, and he was in all the rap tunes, and he had the fro, and he can do the dunk, and he had the highlight reels. Man, I'm not taking anything away from Dr. J. But getting back to Dr. J. So then, Dr. J, what happened? Moses Malone comes Moses Malone y'all get Moses Malone in 82 and what's that instant championship because now you finally have what you need I won't say <coughs> necessarily a super team but you have one of the greatest players of all time a top 20 player Moses Malone plus yourself and now all of a sudden you can win the championship now what if what if you would have went and joined him but that would have been different well they brought him to you well that's because management you had a good front office who can surround you with a Mo Cheeks and other integral parts that can help you compete, help you get to the Eastern Conference Finals, help you battle Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics, help you be able to finally beat the Lakers, and not only just beat the Lakers, but sweep the Lakers because they got you a Moses Malone. But the sad thing about it, Dr. J, is you was in the twilight of your career. You was in the twilight of your career when this happened, and you finally won that ship. And when you won that ship, what happened? Moses Malone was only there two more years. You were old in age, and then you retired in 86. So you only got that one NBA championship. And you got two ABA championships. So you're a three-time champion, you're a four-time MVP, and I take nothing away from you. But when you sit up here and say, first of all, that LeBron James was the one who started super teams, let's just be honest. You can say LeBron James was the first player. Who, and let me not misquote you. You're saying that LeBron James was the first player to add player-created super teams. Player-created super teams. So if that's what you want to say, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock back on this because at the end of the day, they were not a super team. In my opinion, that's not a super team because Dwayne Wade was on his last legs. Dwayne Wade was not the Dwayne Wade of 06 or 07, the Dwayne Wade that that beat the Dallas Mavericks in the finals. Dwayne Wade couldn't beat the could beat the Dallas Mavericks in the finals, but then all of a sudden couldn't beat him when he had LeBron and Bosch. And a lot of people slight that Dallas team, but as we all know, that Dallas team beat OKC that year with Durant, Harden, and uh, Westbrook, and they also swept the defending champion Kobe Bryant, uh, Pau Gasol, Los Angeles Lakers, and we know that. So let's not slight that team. So at the end of the day, you want to talk about LeBron James, he created a super team. Well, if your front office is not capable of surrounding you with a good supporting cast where that, that you can go out and compete and, and, and win a championship, then who is that on? Now, LeBron maybe would have stayed, but then as you can see, the Celtics had already built a super team in, in the Eastern Conference by adding a KG and a Ray Allen to Paul Pierce. Because we already knew what Paul Pierce was capable of, even with his years with Antoine Walker, how good of a team. And I knew the day that they announced that Ray Allen and KG was going to Boston, that it was going to be an instant championship for them. 
It's certain players that you know who can do that. A player like Kobe Bryant. When I knew that Pau Gasol was going to the Lakers, I knew that was going to be uh, instant championship contention because when you have a player as great as Kobe Bryant and you put him with another player that's good or on a higher level, then that's all they really need. I'm so tired of the super team narrative. You need a dynamic duo. Go back and find my videos on the do dynamic duo. And you got to realize every championship team was won like that. Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen. And I mean, you can throw Robin in there. You can throw Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, and all the other supplemental pieces in the Boston. Even with the Celtics, you could throw in uh, uh, Aguirre, and you could throw in the microwave, Vinny Johnson. You could throw in John Sally. You could throw in that. But I'm talking about the main two. You got to have two good options in the NBA in order to be successful and win championships. That's why I welcome the sight of Kyrie and KD teaming up. Because, okay, now you got LeBron and AD against Kyrie and, and KD. But they added James Harden. But nobody crying about them making a super team because guess what, Dr. J? It's within the ramifications of the rules. You hated on the Nets and said that they trying to buy a championship. Well, that's what you do. You're in the business of trying to win. I'm not upset with Harden joining that. And I'm not upset with LeBron going to Miami because Chris Bosh, like I said, what has he? What did he really do before LeBron? And people want to say Kevin Love. What did Kevin Love, Kyrie Irving, Chris Bosh all do before LeBron? Had any of them won anything? No. What, what has D-Wade done in the years leading up to LeBron getting there after he had won the championship? It was several years after that. What had they done? They were not even a team that had over 50 wins before LeBron got there. And let's just be honest, LeBron was the best player on that team and the leader of that team. So how is he creating a super team? So then he goes back to Cleveland, a team that's in the basement with number one draft picks because Kyrie Irving has not led them to anything, and you add another free agent in Kevin Love, so what? You had Wiggins, who was the number one pick, if they would have kept them. Is that a super team? Why? Because you added Kevin Love, the bonehead who just gave the ball to the other team the other day? No offense, Kevin Love. Much love to you, but come on, Kayla. You're not, you're not all that. Just because... Chris Bosh, and I'm going to say this again, Chris Bosh and Kevin Love were number one options at Minnesota Timberwolves and at Toronto Raptors, respectively. They were the number one options. If you, and people keep saying, well, LeBron makes them work. Y'all got some smooth-ass brains. Because if LeBron and Chris Bosh, I mean, if Chris Bosh was the number one option in Toronto, of course he's going to score 25 a game. He's getting way more attempts and usage out of them and touches. The same thing with Kevin Love. Oh, well, they relegated them to jump shooters. They had to sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Getting a couple more points? Shit, y'all got a championship. Sacrifice what? You got a ring. What has Kyrie done since he left LeBron? Nothing. You went and destroyed Boston. What did you do? Okay, now you got Kevin Durant. You fancy. Do it without him. But you have it. And you can't. But Dr. J, you want to sit up here and say LeBron James was a player who created super teams and you had the audacity not to put this man in your first and second team. But then your first team, if I'm not mistaken, you got what? Elgin Baylor, Wilt Chamberlain, and Jerry West. Hell, they was all on the same team. That's a super team. That's a super team. And then on your second team, this show you, you very generational and favor who you grew up with, Dr. J. You have to have uh, less bias because everybody you pick is not no new generational player on your list. And that can simply not be the case. Now, I grew up watching Michael Jordan. I grew up watching Isaiah Thomas. I grew up watching Larry Bird. I grew up watching Charles Barkley. I grew up watching... Uh, Carl Malone. I grew up watching David Robinson. I grew up watching Penny. I grew up watching Shaq. I grew up watching John Stockton. I grew up watching uh, Clyde the Glide Drexler. I grew up watching Sean Kemp. I grew up watching Gary Payton. I grew up watching uh, uh, Alonzo Mourning. I grew up watching Larry Johnson. I grew up watching Patrick Ewing. I grew up watching all these great players. And I got respect for all of them. But you cannot sit up here and tell me that you not have one person on your first or second team that is in that's past the year 2000, bro. Now, you got to stop that, Dr. J. I'm going to have to call the doctor on you because you need a head doctor, a psychiatrist or something because you sick, boy. You sick if you think that LeBron James is not deserving. And you want to say because of a team narrative, we're talking about when you're picking somebody for first team and second team, it's all about individual play. So if you cannot see that LeBron James is 
probably the most gifted basketball player physically, mentally, and talent-wise that you've ever seen in your life. And you can sit up here and honestly say, and I'm not, trust me, y'all, I'm not taking anything. I'm not one of those people who say, listen, well, this was before my time because I know what Elgin Baylor was capable of. There are players who can transcend any generation. It's players who can transcend any generation. Will Chamberlain could play in any generation. You understand what I'm telling you? Michael Jordan could play in any generation. LeBron James could play in any generation. Dwayne Wade could play in any generation. The Big O could play in any generation. And people want to talk about, oh, I saw a post the other day, oh, uh, Kevin Durant would, would, would make Larry Bird, uh, whatever. So, man, listen to me. As weak mentally as Kevin Durant is, do you think he can hang with Larry Bird? I'm not saying he's not a better scorer because he is a better scorer than Larry Bird. But I'm not about to knock Larry Bird and take nothing away from Larry Bird because I know how great Bird was. I watched him play. I know what he's capable of. This is a man who said, you know what, I'm going to go out here and shoot left-handed the whole game, free throws and everything, and did it. And shot at a high clip because he could. And you say, well, he was going against lesser competition. Look, you play who put in front of you. But the thing about it is Larry Bird is not – is not a player who you can take and think about it. You're talking about physical fitness and all this and that. Larry Bird was mowing grass and doing everything else. If he had the same treatment and the same training that these players have nowadays and was afforded the same opportunity of the sports science and medicine uh, that's afforded to these players today, Larry Bird would be even more of a legend now than he was back then. Because y'all forget, the Celtics were trash. They had won all their championships already. The Celtics weren't doing anything then until Larry Bird came back and brought them back to prominence and made Danny Ainge into a better player, made Dennis Johnson into a better player, made Robert Parrish into a better player, made Kevin McHale into a better player. So don't sit up here and tell me that, that oh, uh, Larry Bird couldn't transcend. So I'm not trying to get off topic, but my main point is, Dr. J, don't be so biased, you know, towards your old generation. I mean, you know, I'm in my 40s and I'm not up here uh, gonna sit up here and say that all the players in the 90s were better than players now because there's some players now who that are even not even superstar players who are better than some of the so-called what you might say a star player was in, in in those days tim hardaway was a damn good player you understand what i'm saying but ask me if i'd rather have tim hardaway or russell westbrook then i'm gonna go russell westbrook because he's far more athletic he's far more athletic and he has a higher skill set now I'm, I'm not just saying he's he's a much better player because Tim Hardaway holds his own. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about Tim Hardaway Jr. for those who you think I am. But I'm just trying to give you an example of today's player versus the uh, against the older players. You understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, Dr. J, where was your success at in 1980? You lost against Magic, like I said. You lost against Magic Johnson in 80. Then in 81, you lost against Larry Bird and the Celtics in seven games and couldn't make it past. Then in 82, you lost to the Lakers again, four to two. And until you could not get, until you got Moses Malone making a super team is when you won. And that's when you uh, beat the Lakers and swept the Lakers, as a matter of fact, because of your super team that was created by your front office. So don't be mad because LeBron does that. And even if you, if that's what you choose to say, he did that and you're talking about teams, you're, you're saying is that makes him a great player. So let me ask you this, Dr. J. Let me ask you this, Dr. J. Had you not won any championships and you were never, and you was never surrounded by Mo Cheeks and uh, Moses Malone and had, had not won a championship, uh, would you be considered a great player? Would you consider yourself a great player? Would you consider yourself an all-time great? But see, you were afforded the luxury of having a front office who could surround you with that talent. But unfortunately, you wasted a lot of your career. And speaking, and I forgot to mention, when the merger did come uh, in 75 and 76, by that time, uh, uh, Oscar Robertson was retiring, so you wouldn't have had a chance to play with him anyway. But as we all know, Kareem did the Milwaukee Bucks a solid, and he knew that the rule was about to be passed. So instead of him, he would have been creating a super team by headed to the Lakers with Jerry West. Do you understand? He would have been creating a super team. I mean, you know, uh, going to going out west, but he didn't. He gave Milwaukee a pass. 
he gave me a walk of pass and he told him, listen, I'm leaving next year. I'm Muslim. I want to be in LA. I played for UCLA. I love it out on the West Coast. I love the weather. I do not want to be up here in, in, in Milwaukee, which, hey, if I had a choice between LA and Milwaukee, you know what I'm going to ride with anyway. But anyway, I just had to come with this video, y'all. I know it was a little bit long-winded, and I, I appreciate everybody who stayed with me through the entirety of this uh, video. But please do me a favor, like and share uh, the link. Uh, even if you got to put it on the time of your favorite part of the video, like and share it and on, on all your favorite social media sites and in your groups so we can go ahead and get the subscription up on this so we can go ahead and start this movement uh, for right on to the real and much love to the haters. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I would greatly appreciate it if y'all do that. Put down in your comments what you think about it, what you think about Dr. J, what you think about his comments. As always, one love.